Everybody, get that box of random cables out because today we're going to recycle some power cables. I'm going to show you how to make your own extension cords and if you need to make your own power cons. Let's get into it. So in my case, with these Presona speakers, they run with a power con. And when you stick two speakers on top of each other, I just needed a short one to go from speaker to speaker. Now the cost of buying one of these is actually pretty substantial. One cable was $20. So for the same price, I can buy five male and five female ends and make my own cables. First thing is safety. Now I'm not an electrical engineer, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But if you look at the outside of the jacket, you can see the gauge of the cable and you can also see what the coating is made out of. In this case, the cable supplied by the company to power the speaker looks like it's an SJT 16 gauge. And you can see here, I have a cable that's an SVT 18. And in easy terms, the SVT is just thinner insulation, so it's not as protected. The gauge is important because it depends on how much power you're putting through it. So if you were to say run these little LED lights and you're running one, it's not gonna be quite as important as if you're chaining a whole bunch of them together because all that power is gonna be going into one, into the next one. So that cable is gonna to have to handle all that power. And it becomes increasingly more important when things have bigger draws like the speakers or subwoofers. So just try to make sure that you think about that when you're doing your cables. In this case, I'm just going one speaker to the next. Most people recommend when they're doing their own cables that you want a 12-3. And what the 12-3 means is 12 gauge, three wire. This will work in 99% of the applications you want to do safely. The odd part about gauges is the smaller the number, the thicker the wire. I'm sure there's some logical re reasoning for that. So if you have a 12 and a 14, your 12 is gonna be thicker. And that means it's gonna be able to carry a heavier amount of power and heat before it starts to break down on you. So what you have with your three wires is a live wire, a neutral wire, and a ground. And they're color coded. Now these colors can vary, but usually if you look it up, you can find them. Now the way to hook up a power con is once you know which one's your live wire and which one's your ground, which one's your neutral, when you look on the power con itself, it's very hard to see, but it's right behind the screw. You'll see an N for neutral, an L for live, and then I actually don't think the ground wire was labeled, but process of elimination. So you strip away the insulation, and I had these wire strippers that were automatic that just didn't really do a great job with the outside coating. If you're really careful with a knife or a razor blade, you can cut that outside without actually damaging the wires inside and give yourself enough space. But they did work really good when I was doing the actual individual wires. So once I have it stripped, you wanna make sure not to leave a ton hanging out because you don't want it to accidentally arc on something else. The first thing you wanna do when doing this is you wanna make sure that you throw on the cap that screws on to the front piece that connects and also the strain relief. If you don't do this, you're gonna have to unscrew it and redo it all again. Ask me how I know. It's as simple as can be. You just loosen the screw to open up and then you slide it in there and then you tighten it down and you get it as tight as you can, but you don't wanna strip it or strip out the screw. When I get done, I like to pull on the wires a little bit to make sure that they're actually in there nice and snug. Now you don't wanna do it hard because obviously you could pull it out. So now you wanna throw the front end on. And how that works is you can see the the outside shell has to spin a certain way in order to go over, so you can't screw this up at all. Once you go over the top, then you put the strain relief up there, and the strain relief is really weird, but when you spin it, it'll only lock in in one position, and that's how you know you got the right one. And then you bring the cap on, and you spin it tight, and make sure it's snug, and there you go, cable done. Super easy. Then all you have to do is repeat the process with the correct color for the opposite side because one is gray and one is blue and that's just for in and out. So if we're just doing an extension cord and you're cutting off this piece here that you can see used to be just a normal PC connecting piece that you can't actually plug into. When I put this end on there, what you have to do is, in my case, I bought them on Amazon and it told you which one to put the wire in which spot. There we go, super simple. You just need to be careful, check the right gauges, realize how much power you're gonna be throwing through. But really, almost anybody can do this if they just take their time and do it right. 
Thank you for joining me for this video where we take some old cables that you're never gonna use and recycle them and actually make them useful. And in the end, save a little money. Thank you so much and we'll check you out in the next video.